Okay, so what's up there mga kaedok? Ito babalik ang inyong host, si Jika Sensei And good morning sa inyong lahat And welcome back sa ating Bura Bura live stream session Okay, so ngayong umaga po Pag-aaralan man natin ang topic Regarding po sa teaching, araling, panlipunan Or social studies For elementary grade Okay, so we have two discussions here Yung isa excited na <laughs> Okay, so Nauna siya kanina sa akin <laughs> May balak po mag live streamer eh. Okay, tama yan Brad. Okay. So ladies and gentlemen, ang ating pag-uusapan is about oral and visual activities. Okay, so yung mga magpapabati po, just go there sa ating comment section at isa-shoutout namin kayo later. Okay, so for now, wala pa. Sige, pero meron ng mga viewers ladies and gentlemen. We have six viewers right now po. Maraming salamat po um, for viewing our live streaming uh, session ngayon po. Hapon. Okay, sorry ay, sorry ngayong umaga pala. Kala ko hapon na eh. <laughs> Palagi ako sa loob ng kwarto. Okay? So mga kaibigan, we have to discuss it all the way from Bachelor of Elementary Education. Okay? Second year. 2B. Tama 2B kayo? Yes, yes sir. Po. Okay, so ladies and gentlemen, ipapakilala natin na ating mga discussion for today's topic. And first, we have here Sir Timothy Jos sa Maniego. Sir, bati ka po. Hello po. My name is Timothy Josh Arsamaniego from BED2B and I am going to be your discussant for today. Okay, Shout sir. Um, uh, taga saan si sir? Taga Kabaangan ng Baliw, Pulanga Albay po, sir. <laughs> taga Pulanga, pagkala akong taga sa inyo. Hindi ko malalik ako sa Baliw. Okay, so shoutout sa mga taga barangay, Kabaangan, o Baliw. Langi Albay. So, alam niyo po yan. Yan po yung gateway papunta po ng uwas at gateway papasok po ng Ulangi. Ulangi. <laughs> so, dyan po yan. Okay. So, maraming salamat, Sir Timothy Jones sa Maniego. May gusto ko ka, Sir, shoutout. Sige na. Tirahin mo na. <laughs> <laughs> shoutout sa mga klase ko dyan. Tips, sir. And God bless po. Okay. okay. Uh, maraming salamat, Sir Timothy Jones. Okay. Babalikan ka namin later. And also, uh, yan, we also have here, okay, isa natin ano yan, lady discussant. We have Ma'am Joyce Berialia. Ma'am, bati ka po. Hello po. We'll Ma'am, tagasan po sila? About... Tagaligaw po. Aligaw ka? Akala ko ang mga Villarreal, ano yan? Ang uh, uwas? May pinsang kayo sa uwas? Wala man po. Okay, so ma'am, ang um, batiin natin ating mga viewers. Come on. Hello po sa inyo. We'll be discussing about oral and visual activities. Okay, so ma'am, saan ka po sa ligaw? Sa baka... gilid po. Okay, baka may gusto dyang ano yan eh, bumisita sa'yo. <laughs> oh, mga kababayan. <laughs> okay, so sige ma'am, shoutout mo yung ating mga kabarangay. Come on. Pa-shoutout sa mga kabarangay ko tapos sa kabla ko din. <laughs> okay, thank you very much ma'am, Joyce Villarreal. And shoutout po sa mga taga-barangay gilid, ligaw. City. Ayan. So, ladies and gentlemen, we have two discussion for today's topic. Sana po wag umepal si APEC. <laughs> Yari na naman tayo dito. So, again, we have Sir Timothy Jos sa Maniego and we have Ma'am Joyce Villarreal. So, wag kayong alis, guys. At marami tayong pag-uusapan ngayon regarding sa ating topic which is oral and visual activities. Okay? Wag kayong alis. We'll be right back. Okay, so nagbabalikan yung host, CJ Kasensai, and good morning once again sa ating mga viewers. Okay, but before we start our first discussion, tingnan nun natin ang ating live stream comment section. Baka may gusto na magpabate. Yon! Oh, we have, okay, ang aking ano yan. Napakagwapong ninong. Hello, Sir Benji Nebre. Sir, maraming salamat po. Keep safe palagi, Sir. Sabi ni Sir, nice. Wow. Tirahin talaga. <laughs> yan, 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 yan po, Sir, ang banatan sa ano yan, sa live streaming. <laughs> Kahit ano yan eh. So, dapat may commercial na ha. <laughs> oh, sir, next time sir, ikaw commercial natin yung hindi ko na-deliver sa yung imbutido. <laughs> yan, yan sa mga ano yan eh. Nakalimutan ko sir, i-deliver. Okay, pag, pag ready-ready na sir, di kami gumagawa ngayon kasi medyo busy tayo sa ating live streaming. Okay? So, next time sir, di-deliver kami dyan sa inyo. Okay? Para matikman ninyo ang aming Uh, tawag po dito, special imbutido. Okay? Ladies and gentlemen, maraming salamat po sa ating mga viewers ngayong umaga. Okay? Thank you very much po, Sir Benji Ninong. Sir Benji Nebres. Okay? And keep safe po palag, Sir. 
Okay, so ladies and gentlemen, I think uh, it's time now for uh, our discussant to deliver his discussion. Okay, it is morning regarding oral and visual activities. Ready ka na, sir, Timothy? Okay, ladies and gentlemen, po, let's yes, proceed po. sa ating discussion, sir. Take it away. Using oral and visual activities. Oral means uttered by the mouth or in words spoken. And visual means relating to seeing or sight. Classroom strategy using oral activities. Verbally expressing ideas and responding to other students will develop self-confidence as well as enhance their communication and critical thinking skills, which are vital throughout life. It is the foundation for the reading and writing skills. The ability to use oral language effectively impacts all areas of a child's life. From their ability to learn in the classroom, their relationship with others, their academic success, and their sense of and sense of self. And further to that, there is evidence indicating that reduced oral language can lead to mental health problems such as a depression and anxiety may persist into adulthood. They will use oral language in all aspects of their education, in the classroom, as they connect with their peers and teachers, and throughout their lives as they grow into adulthood. With the use of oral language in teaching, it saves time by letting you convey your message directly to the other person and getting the response immediately. It is most secure from form of communication for critical issues and important information. It helps to resolve conflicts with a face-to-face -face communication. Oral activities help children become successful readers, strong communicators, as well as increasing their confidence and overall sense of well-being. Oral assessments takes account of diversity and enable students to develop verbal communication skills that will be valuable in their future careers. So I have here a five examples of oral activities in the classroom. Yeah, yan ang hinihintay ng mga viewers natin. Sample, sample. <laughs> okay na sir, sige. Okay, ano unang sample? <laughs> The number one is think parents, yeah. Set a problem or a question around a certain topic and pair up your students. Give each pair students enough time so they can reach a proper conclusion and permit the kids to share their conclusion. In their voice, this way, your students will be engaged communicating and remember more of the class than even, than ever before. So, the Think Parent Share activity gives them the opportunity to feel more comfortable sharing their thoughts. In addition to fostering social skills, this strategy also improves students' speaking and listening skills. When pairs brainstorm together, each student learns from their partner. Think Parent Share is very effective in building the confidence of a student. It can also help them to practice their communication skills. So, next, second one is brainstorming. Interactive brainstorming is mostly performed in group sessions. The process is useful for generating creative thoughts and ideas. Brainstorming helps students to learn to work together and above all, learn from each other. So, may tanong ako, sir. <coughs> Regarding yes, sa, sa brainstorming, it's an interactive activity, okay? So, in yes, terms po. of uh, oral and visual activity, ano yung gagawin ng bata after brainstorming? For example. Uh, ano po, sorry. They can share their uh, ideas and thoughts about a certain topic po. Okay. And ang tanong dito, since brainstorming 'yan, okay, pagkatapos ng kanilang activity, ano lahat ba sila magpe-present? 
sa unahan or say inside the classroom or pipili lang sila ng isang um, leader or let's say speaker to present their ideas. Pipili lang po, sir. Ah, okay. So, yan. So, klar- klaraduin natin yun kasi kung kung lahat kasi yan magsasalita, <laughs> baka maubos oras nyo, di ba? So, important yes, ito. Po. So, mga ka-educ natin. Okay, pointers lang yun. Okay, let's proceed, sir. The next is bus session. Participants come together in sessions, groups that focus on single topic. Within each group, every student contributes their thoughts and ideas, encourage discussion and collaboration among the students within each group. Everyone should learn from each other's input and experience. As a teacher, you could give your students some keywords to spark the conversation. So, bus sessions allows everyone ideas to be expressed. Participants learn to work in real-life situations where others' opinions are considered. It sets the groundwork to get discussion started. Bus sessions are short, focused, cross-functional team sessions designed to get people involved, voice, heard, and ideas captured for feeding great content into the strategic planning process. So, ano ibig sabihin, anong ibig sabihin nun? <laughs> Medyo madami kang sinabi ah. <laughs> Nose bleed. Okay, so ganito sir. Um, sa bus session ba, tahimik ang mga estudyante or maingay? Yes or no? Maingay po, sir. Ah. <laughs> Tama ba na yung teacher magsabi na, uy, aluraw ka mo, tanang rebok. <laughs> Tapos yung activity, bus session. Tama ba yun? <laughs> Tama ba yun? Okay. Okay. So, okay. understandable po yung ano, teacher. So, we normally do bus session kapag medyo uh, ang topic natin sa <coughs> excuse me, sa araling panlipunan is mapatungkol sa mga topics na pwedeng bigyan ng inferring, pwedeng bigyan ng kanya-kanyang opinion. Okay? For example, uh, mga opinion like, for example, sa EDSA Revolution, mga opinion nyo regarding sa mga presidente ng Pilipinas, pwede natin gamitan ng bus session, okay? But, we normally do bus session, okay? Um, not everyday. We we just normally do it in some cases we're in if it's suitable for a particular lesson or subject matter, okay? So, ngayon, ang tanong dito, kung nakakaingay na sa kabilang classroom, sino magpapacilitate dyan? Sino, sir? Teacher po. Ah, teacher. Yung teacher. So, oo, kasi iiwasan natin, meron kasi mga teacher na ayaw din sa maingay. Na, ano yan? Baka okay. nakakaingay kayo. So, ito yung mga pointers dito kapag gagamit tayo ng mga ganitong uri ng activities. Because, hindi nyo talaga mapipigilan na mag-ingay ang estudyante dyan. So, just to make sure, the teacher should facilitate para hindi naman po tayo makagulo sa kabilang classroom. Maganda siya. Maganda siya kasi active yung mga estudyante, di ba? Na motivate silang mga ano yan, uh, mag-aral or let's say to participate on a particular activity inside the classroom. Yun nga lang, we need to take consideration, okay, not only the classroom uh, setup but of course, the other adjacent classrooms. Kasi baka nakakagulo na. Importante yan ha, kung ayaw nyo mag-away kayo ng kapwa nyo teacher, madami na ako nakita dyan. <laughs> Naisurugudan yung classroom. O, ingatan nyo yan. Okay, so let's proceed sir. Next is icebreakers. Icebreakers are low-stake activities that get students to interact and talk to each other and encourage subsequent classroom interactions. They can be useful at the beginning of the semester. For example, asking students to introduce themselves to each other and what they would like to learn in the course. Advantages of icebreakers include participation of each students the creation of a sense of communities and focusing students' attention on material that will be covered during the class period. So, icebreakers help students to think critically. Icebreakers help to help the teacher to get the attention of every student before they begin their lesson. Icebreakers relax people and help them to get to know each other far more quickly. It also helps to energize and motivate participants. It can also create a relaxed environment where students share ideas and participate more fully in the class. Tanto natin, sir, pwedeng gamitin. 
sa isang ano yan, teaching learning setup. Bago po magsimula yung topic, sir. Okay, so sa form of motivation. Ano pa? Okay. Saan pa natin pwedeng gamitin yung icebreaker? Sa ano po, sir? Eh, ano po? Kapag kan mga estudyante to... yung nag-urgab na. <laughs> to catch the attention. Oo. Oh. Oh, pag mga estudyante nyo parang wala nang interest, kailangan mo bang mag-icebreaker? Yes po. Oo. Oh, oh. Kasi puro lang. <laughs> puro lang daw basa. Para yung energy. Oh, para bumalik yung energy. Okay, thank you very much, sir. Okay, let's proceed po sa ating... Okay, last sample here. Come on. And the last is forced debate. Let students debate in pairs. In pairs. Students must defend the opposite side of their personal opinion. It encourages them to set to step away from their own beliefs and teach them to look through a different colored glass once in a while. Variation. One half of the class takes one position, and the other half takes the other position. Students line up and face each other. Each student may only speak once so that all students on both sides can engage the issue. Debates can help to increase the confidence of students' voice and self-esteem, can improve critical thinking skills, people acquire better speech delivery and public speaking skills, increase students' retention of information learned. <clears throat> Debates teach students how to accept different points of views of theirs and others in the same topic. They can learn agree and disagree. It, it may find a way to solve an issue. Learn how to compromise with others. Okay. Palagi nyo itong ginagawa eh. Palagi itong ginagawa sa inyo ng mga teachers ninyo. Lalong-lalo na kung medyo mainit ang topic. Normally, kapag ang teacher nagkagamit ng first debate, okay, it, it will talk about a particular issue in the society. Siyempre, para lipad-lipunan kayo. So, ang tanong dito, yung topic ba or yung team, close-ended or open-ended? Ano po? Open-ended po. Yan. Kasi magbibigay ng opinion. Sibig sabihin, so, bibigyan nyo pa ng solusyon. So, sa uh, first debate, lahat dapat magkasalita. So for example, hatiin niyo yung classroom. Okay, so guys, uh, sabi ng teacher, lead uh, students, we're going to have a forced debate. So group yourselves into one and two. Yan. Di ba nagbibilang kayo? Count up one, two, one, two, one, two, until maubos na lahat. And then, lahat ng one dito sa isang, ano yan, side, lahat ng two doon naman sa kabilang side. Tapos papadibatihin ninyo. Okay? So maganda tong simulan uh, or maganda tong gamitin kung medyo uh, mahaba yung time. Kung medyo early yes, kayo. Po. Pero kung medyo maubos na yung oras ninyo, wag na. Okay? Kasi ano, importante rin na i-consider niyo yung duration ng inyong subject. Baka meron kasi nakapila sa kabilang ano yan, room. May, meron ng teacher na gada-gadang sa inyo. <laughs> Sir, time check na po. <laughs> Mom, time check na. Yan. So, baka hindi lang matapos yung inyong discussion. Okay? So, ano pa, sir? Yes, po. And the importance of oral activities. Oral activities help students to practice of language items, vocabulary, grammar, function, and etc. Oral activities help students to develop their ability to speak fluently and interactively. Increase engagement. Increases engagement. Students who are actively learning are actively engaged whether solving a problem, debating an issue, or researching a concept. They are processing ideas and forging deeper understanding, improve critical thinking, and can spark creative thinking. Oh, ano <laughs> Okay na po. Oh, no, okay na? Tapos ka na? Opo. Ah, okay. Sige. Uh, matanong ko lang ano yan, si, ano yan, sir. Regarding po dito sa topic natin. Uh, tawag ba dyan? Regarding po sa importance ng oral activities. Noong number one, sabi dyan, oral activities help students to practice language items. Okay. So, ang tanong dito is, mamimilit ka ba ng estudyante? sa isang oral activities. We all know na hindi naman lahat dyan mahilig magsalita. Right? Yes po. So, kung ikaw yung facilitator ng learning, 
Ikaw na lang ba ang pipili or papipiliin mo yung mga bata? Mm -mm. For example, ng mga speakers nila afterwards. Ano ano sa tingin mo, sir? Para sa'yo, okay, kung magpapagroup activities ka and then afterwards magkakaroon ng presentation, sila mo papipiliin or ikaw ang pipili ng mag-deliver ng presentation among different groups? Ano po, sir? It depends po, sir, kasi um, I use... I usually let the students po to choose who are going to explain their reports po, sir. Ah, yeah, mas po. gusto mo. Para mayroong ano yan, freedom. Oh, oh, tama yun kasi oh. demokrasya tayo. Okay, ang tanong ko naman dito sa ating dalawang discussion, since kayo nag-high nag school kayo, alin ba mas madami oh. sa classroom? Yung mga walang imek or yung mga grabe magsalita? <laughs> yung ano, sir? Grabe po, magsalita. Salita. Okay, so mas madami yung talkative. Kaysa oh, mga sa silent type. Tapos pag-ano sa... Hindi, yan. Ah, for... <laughs> for how many years of... Ano yan? Let's say in, in your six years of uh, education in high school, in senior high and junior high school, talaga mas madami sa experience ninyo yung talkative. Yes oh. po, sir. Okay. So, dito pala sa Pilipinas, so mas maganda pa talaga... Mas, mala, mas maganda talaga na merong oral activities, no? <laughs> sa oh, po, sir. Okay. So, yun lamang, sir. Tapos ka na po? Yes po. Okay, so ladies and gentlemen, tapos na po si Sir uh, Timothy Joss Samaniego. So, yan po ang ating unang um, discussion and that's about oral activities. Maraming salamat po ulit Sir Timothy Joss Samaniego and wag kayong alis mga kaedo at meron pa tayong susunod na topic. Okay? We'll have a short break. We'll be right back. Okay, so nagbabalikan yung host Andrew Kasentay at gumaganda ating at mga usapan okay, dito po sa ating uh, topic regarding po sa oral and visual activity. So, a uh, while ago, na-discuss ni Sir Timothy yung oral activities. Okay, so ang susunod natin is visual activities. But before that, check muna natin ulit ang ating live stream chat section. Baka may gusto ulit magpabate. Okay, hindi ko lang siguro na-check. Ayan. So, si Sir Bipo, wala yun yung nanood. <laughs> anyway, so, yan, ladies and gentlemen. Salamat po sa ating mga ano yan, viewers. And then, so, nagbigay ng reaction. So, ladies and gentlemen, okay, let's proceed na po sa ating next topic. Okay? And that is about visual activities. Okay? So, let's proceed po with Ma'am Joyce Villarreal. Ma'am, ikaw na po. Classroom strategy using visual activities. A picture is worth a thousand of words. Visuals are powerful aids in retention as well as in understanding. It brings dull academic concepts to life with visual and practical learning experiences. Like kapag may pinakita ako sa inyo ng picture, you all can convey different meanings. Depende sa pagkakaintindi at pagkakita nyo in your own point of view about sa picture na yon. It contains multiple languages, meanings, and ideas in a single image. It conveys its meaning or essence more effectively in a photo than a mere verbal description. It helps students to grasp content. Learning can be reinforced with different teaching or learning resources because they stimulate, motivate as well as focus learners' attention for a while during the instructional process. Visual aids arouse the interest of learners and help the teachers to explain the concepts easily. So, mas, sa pagkakatingin ko, mas effective ang visuals to keep memory retention. Like for example, sa lesson, especially to young learners, hindi sila masyado nagpe-pay attention to the words mm. we say. 
they, ap- they pay attention more sa actions or visuals na pinapakita natin sa kanila. Hmm. Nakukuha natin ng attention with the use of that way because visuals hold more appeal than plain text to those curious and initiative young minds. Mm-mm. Naalala niyo dun sa hierarchy of learning. Ang um, mas madami talaga po ang tawag ba dito? Um, or let's say mas mataas yung level of cognition excitement ng bata kapag mayroon siyang nakikita. Kaya nga dapat talaga normally magkatambal yung visual at oral. Kaya ang tawag nga natin minsan diyan is audiovisual, di ba? Sige subukan yung tanggalin yung yung dub sa Korean drama. <laughs> Subukan yung tanggalin. <laughs> o kaya, tanggalin yung subtitle. <laughs> o, sige, try nyo. Di ba, ma'am? O, yun. So, importante pala talaga yung visual sa ating mga learners. Lalo na sa ating emerging learners or yung mga nasa primary grade. Let's proceed, ma'am. So, the examples po is using the interactive whiteboard to display photos audio clips and videos as well as encouraging your students to get out of their seats with classroom experiments and local field trips. Gumagawa pa ba tayo na ito ngayon? Local field trips. Have you ever tried ang nung elementary kayo, nagkaroon ba kayo ng tour, educational tour? Opo, once po, nung grade 6. Ah, salawa, salamat. Awa ng Diyos, naka-field trip kayo. Ano? Ano sa tingin mo, ma? Masaya? Opo, effective din naman po. Oo, kasi yung hindi kayang i-explain ng book, ba? Diba? Makikita Opo. nyo personally. Tapos okay. at the same time, na-enjoy din po yung mga bata. Mm-mm. May tanong ako sa inyo. Sa tingin nyo, gano'ng kalaki ang La Espolarium? Yung painting ni Juan Luna? Hindi ko ba alam. Oo. Diba sa libro, nakita nyo na yon Sa CB Cat Culture, sa Aral ng Panlipunan? Ah, uh, nung first time ko siyang nakita, gulat na gulat ako. <laughs> Gurugod na galpalan ka. <laughs> Akala ko diyan yung tawag ba dito, yung painting lang na nakalagay sa cardboard or sa ano yan, na maliit na canvas. Nako po, ang laki po. Mas malaki pa sa dingding ng ano yan, ng BUPC <laughs> sa Sensei <laughs> Building. Malaki po talaga ang Lasipularium kaya nga dapat tatandaan niyo to. Mga Pilipino kayo no. Huwag kayong papayag. Okay na bilang isang guro, hindi nyo pa po nararating ang National Museum. Punta kayo doon hmm, sa Manila. Importante siya. Para ma- makita talaga ninyo yung um, hindi ninyo ma um, sukat akalaing mga paintings or let's say mga artifacts na meron tayo. So, dapat po. So, sa mga ano yan, magiging mga teachers, bisita po kayo na pag natapos na ating pandemic. Uh, may, may konting bayad lang naman, pero yung makikita nyo doon is very, very valuable, okay? It's worth visiting ating National Museum. Okay, let's proceed, ma'am. So, so first... Ay, okay. Sige. So, so first photo is the visual, the visual is the book. The child is reading a book. And the second one is the teacher providing some teaching presentation to the children. The third pick, the teacher demonstrate on how to do the activities. And the last one is when they are in a tour. So all of those brings interest to the young learners. That's why almost all of them participated in those said activities. Hindi tulit sa pag story telling lang yung iba hindi nakikinig. And most of them are distracted with some things. And some are sleepy. Okay, tama yun. Talaga, nangyayari yan. Kapag puro na lang dinig, di ba, pag puro na lang talk yung teacher, ay, yan, yeah, usad-usad na kan. Bata ang yoning, kambagang ugab, nakahawa. <laughs> Surunodan ka. Oo, so dapat talaga may visual, di ba, may nakikita yung bata para at least attentive siya. Okay, ano pa ma'am? Yun lang ko, sir. Okay. Oral and visual forms of literacy are useful teaching and learning. Visuals are worth including in your presentations because they can help you explain information more coherently, which makes presenting easier for you and learning easier for the audience. They also help add variety to your presentation, thus making it more interesting for the audience. 
So, oral and visual are perfect yeah, yeah. as sabi nga din po ni sir. Of course, you cannot explain something in the visuals if you will not going to use your communication with them. It will make the discussion more interesting in that way. Yep. Alam nyo, lalo na ladies and gentlemen, okay? Lalong-lalo na po pag nagtuturo kayo ng reading, di ba? Kung wala kayong big book, kung wala kayong illustrations dun sa ano yan, sa uh, tawag ba dito sa board, kung nagtuturo kayo, for example, sa kinder, yung bata, oo, oh, nakikinig, pero since yan, nagsisimula pa lang yung mag-picture out ng mga bagay-bagay, nahihirapan pa yan mag-visualize, di ba? Mag-imagine. Ano yung sinasabi ni teacher? Ano yung sinasabi ni ma'am? Although, storytelling is very important for, ano yan, for uh, listening skills ng bata, pero mas maganda, meron siyang nakikita. Di ba? For example, kayo, uh, nakakita na kayo ng storybook, maliit lang. Opo. O, di ba, pinabalik-balikan nyo? Bakit? May picture. May okay. picture. Gusto ko sa inyo. Kahit hindi nyo binabasa, di ba, kahit hindi nyo binabasa, nakikita nyo lang yung picture, parang alam nyo na yung kung ano nangyayari, ano yung susunod, something like that. Because not all learners are good in um, communication and lang- language skills. Ang, yung iba nga dyan, mas gusto lang, spot siya, lipig sabihin, nanonood lang siya. Wala siyang pakialam kung hindi siya nagbabasa. Basta manonood lang siya. May mga ganun. For example, itong mga lalaki, uh, ikaw, Sir Timothy, nanonood ka ng anime, Opo, sir. Oh, ano? Kamusta? Ilan na edad mo? Maganda, sir. Ah, uh, ilan na edad mo? Po. How old are you? 19 po. Oh, di ba? 19 po. O, oh, tanda mo na rin, no? Ako nga, 30 mo, nulog mo ng anime ng cartoons. Oo. Oh, wala ano, wala naman ako actually... Ano, sir, yung ka po, sir, yung ano, yung One Punch Man. Ah, yun, gusto mo? O, di ba? Kahit di mo naiintindihan masyado yung ano yan. <laughs> Basta gusto mo lang ganun. Alam mo yung story. May subtitles na one, sir. Ah, oh, may subtitle naman. Subukan mo tanggalin. <laughs> oh, di ba? Kasi noong mga panahon namin, 90s, ang anime namin, only in GMA and ABS, dub na siya. May Tagalog dub. Ngayon kasi, mas, mas na-realize ko, mas magandang manood ng anime with subtitle. And of course, yung dub niya is talagang yung totoong Japanese text. Di ba? Oh. Oh, kasi hindi oh, bagay. <laughs> Pero mga bata pa yung ano yan, noong mga bata pa tayo, mas gusto natin yung dub. Kasi hindi pa nga ganun ka-aware or hindi pa ganun kataas yung level ng ating ang language skills. So ngayon, medyo nag edad na tayo, medyo na-appreciate na natin yung magbasa habang nanonood. Ganun siya. Okay? Ano pa, ma'am? Opo. Um, importance of visual activities. Allows the student to look at problems differently in a way that they will understand. For example, a student may not be grasping a concept in math using numbers. But once they visualize the same concept in picture format, they will understand it right away and convert their answer back to numerical form if needed. It increases student memory of important information. Students of all ages are far more likely to remember visuals rather than words. This technique will in- help increase not only their memory of schoolwork but also of faces directions, and etc. It builds the student's understanding of the big picture. They will become increasingly better at overviews and summaries and be able to visualize results. Help students learn more effectively. In a visual format, students can process and retain information much faster and more reliability. Visuals break down information into manageable pieces that are easier to absorb. And the last one is, they increase the student's interest in the subject matter. So when the student gets to learn in a way that they like and understand, they will pay closer attention and the results will be more obvious. Yep. Matanong ko lang si ma'am, no, ma'am ano mga favorite subject mo ma'am nung elementary ka or nung high school? Science po. Bakit science? Kasi interesting po yung concept and kadalasan po yung teacher is parating may visual aids. Mm-hmm. Siyempre. Kaya. If you are going Yun to po. use examples, materials, realia in mathemat, ah sorry, in science, halos nasa kapaligiran nyo lang eh. Opo. Okay. Diba? Ibon, okay, tita, mga, mga hayop, okay, mga dahon, mga bulaklak, diba? Lalo lang yung gumamela. Tanda-tanda nyo pa yan. 
Sino sa inyo dito nag-dissect ng gumamela? Tinignan ninyo yung parts ng flower. Kay hindi kayo pinagawa noon. Hindi po. Oo. So paano sa inyo itinuro yung parts ng ng plants? Visual lang po. Ah, ano yan ang image. Uh, picture. Opo, picture. Oo. Opo. Kasi kami noon talaga, pinakuha kami isa-isa. O, sinong kukuha? Siyempre, mga magula. <laughs> Mama, papa, o kung ano akong gumamela. Uh, Di ba? Kaya dapat talaga yung pag-teach nung ano, napapanahon din in springtime. Di ba? Or let's say in um, um, January or February. Kasi dyan po nag-bloom yung mga flowers. So, dapat doon yung teacher magturo ng ano yan, ng parts of plants. Ewan ko lang kasi sa curriculum natin kung tama pa ba, ba yung pagkakasunod-sunod. Di ko lang sure. Pero sa amin talaga dati, kami talaga na, kami talaga yung bumuka ng bulaklak. Tiningnan namin yung pollen, tiningnan namin yung petals, yung parts sa ilalim. Lahat yun, tiningnan namin. Okay, so para at least um, mas totoo yung bagay, mas maganda. So regarding dito sa sinasabi ni ma'am, okay, sa importance, yung number three, it builds the student's understanding of the big picture. Anong ibig sabihin nito? Sabi ni ma'am, mas interesting siya. Bakit? Or naging interested siya sa science because ang daming dinadalang example yung kanyang teacher. Di ba ma'am? For example, in, in, in discussing or let's say if you are talking about liquids sa matter, ano yung mga daladala ng teacher mo nung nag-explain siya nito o naalala nyo? May naalala kayo? Uh, experiment na ginawa sa science dati? For example, kami dati, nagdala kami ng kung ano-anong ano yan. Toyo, tawyo, suka, tubig, coke. Oo. Tapos, pinagpalit namin yung coke tapos yung suka. <laughs> yun yung laro namin eh. Kasi magkakulay yun. <laughs> so, guessing game namin doon. <laughs> yung unang tubikim ng coke, akala niya coke. <laughs> <laughs> Tawyo pala. <laughs> Nangiridit sa mga bigla. Nangasagad ko. No, kala niya, kung tinunggaan niya eh. Yan. Di kasi ina ginagamit yung ano yan eh. Sabi doon sa instruction, amoyin muna. <laughs> yung ginawa ng kaklase namin, tinunggaan niya na. <laughs> kasi kung <laughs> daw, yung Mar Yosef. Di, yan. yan, importante doon sa sa science, di ba? So, yung, yung bata, oh, nagkakaroon ng mas malawak na pagkaunawa sa mga bagay-bagay. Kaya yung tinatawag natin big picture. Okay? Kaya importante pala talaga ang visual. Right, ma'am? Okay? Opo, oh, sir. And ano pa po, ma'am? Video. Okay? Dito na tayo sa samples. So, video or audio conference. Video and audio are just audio. Connection between two computers. It is communicating via the internet. So the examples of this are free audio conferencing software of Gizmo, Skype. Both are enable users to speak to other Gizmo or Skype users free of charge. Although users can also pay a fee and make calls to landlines using the computer. Examples of free video conference software are iVisit, iChat, and NetMeeting. Um, ang video conferencing is... Uh, actually, ginagawa nyo na yun ngayon eh. Na Google Meet. Opo. Ito. Uh, libre na siya. Dati kasi noong mga panahon, malang internet, may bayad siya. Opo. Lalo na kung overseas, nako po, may bayad yan. Kung naalala nyo pa yung telepono, kung naabutan nyo pa. Ewan kung naabutan nyo pa yung landline telephone. Di na no? Cellphone na kayo? Smartphone na kayo no? Oo. Bibili na lang kayo ng load. So, telecommunication ang bahala doon. Okay? So, let's proceed ma'am. The technology requirements for video or audio conferencing are computer with access to the internet. A browser, speakers to hear audio, microphone, and web camera to contribute video. Yep. So the video or audio conferencing, this is where two or more people in different locations can use technology in communicating or discussing something like a conference bridge to hold an audio or video call. So halimbawa po nito is yung parang meeting or discussing po tulad po ng ginagawa natin. Hmm. Alright. 
Let's proceed, ma'am. So, what is cartoon drawing? Cartoon drawing is resembling a cartoon or a caricature. A sketch or drawing usually humorous as in a newspaper or periodical symbolizing, satirizing, or caricaturing some action subjects or person of a popular interest. Caricature is a picture description or imitation of a person in which certain striking characteristics are exaggerated in order to create a comic or grotesque effect. Satire is the art of making someone or something look ridiculous, raising laughter in order to embarrass, humble, or embarrass, or discredit its target. Tanong ko sa inyo, bakit gustong gusto ng bata yung satire? Okay? Yung satire na sinasabi niyo, yung satire. Yung overacting. Bakit gusto gusto ng bata yung talagang pagtawa-tawa? Bakit gustong gusto ng bata yung mga drawings? Kaya ang hilig-hilig nila sa cartoons. Ano sa tingin niyo ang 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 ano yan, sagot doon? Okay. Ano sa tingin niyo ang sagot? Kayo nung bata kayo, kaya mahilig kayo sa cartoons, di ba? Or kaya ng Cartoon Networks, Disney Channel. Bakit gusto gusto yan ng mga bata? Ano sa tingin niyo kung bakit? Interesting po. Tapos nakukuha po yung attention nila. Mm-hmm. And Tapos then, enjoyable po. Panawad. Yun! Diba? Yun yung keyword yun is enjoy yung bata. Remember, according to Proven, ang batang masaya ay batang natututo. Kung ang bata ay natututo, siya ay masaya. Uh, ba? Diba? Importante yun. Kaya medyo overacting. Kaso lang ito ang sabi ng mga magulang. <laughs> Uy! Gurang na ngayon. <laughs> Gus-gus na ngayon. Nakikita pa ngayon ngayon ang cartoons. <laughs> diba? Yung malagit sabi sa mga gulang natin. Sabi ko naman, ano pa kaya alam nyo? <laughs> Ako naman nagbayad ng internet. Ano yan ha? <laughs> Cable. Ako naman nagbayad ng internet fee. Diba? Eh, di ba? Eh, di kasi nila talaga ang um, generation yun. Iba sila sa atin. Eh, tayo iba na rin tayo eh. So, we need to understand the different side of the learners kung bakit importante yung visual is yun nga. It makes them more. Uh, it makes the learning more interesting, and they are enjoying. Okay, so sir, let's proceed. So, tips, tips on on cartoon. Always start with a basic shape. Use guidelines on your sketches. Get inspiration from other cartoon artists. Squash and stretch. Use good reference material. Push the limits of your cartoon drawing. Keep your art clean. Watch more cartoons, even older ones. Start by drawing what you see and mix it up later. Give, give lots of emotion to your characters. Be insane. Draw nonsense. Don't wait for inspiration to come. Try a different type or style of art. Drawing takes time. So don't rush it. Experiment with other different drawing tools. Progress is slower the more you know. Okay. Kayo dalawa ba nagdo-drawing? Or let's say, meron ba kayong idea kung paano mag-drawing? Um... Pagkailangan lang po, sir. Opo, sir. <laughs> okay. Bibigyan ko na kayo ng ultimato. Dapat po kayo, kasi elementary teacher kayo, no? Dapat po kayo mag-practice mag-drawing. Bakit? Sa panahon po ng pangangailangan, sabi ni Sir Timothy, kung kayo po ay napadpad sa medyo far up lang barangays, or let's say sa uplat, or let's say doon po sa isla, wala namang internet, so gagamitin nyo lang is MPP, Manila PowerPoint Presentation. <laughs> Gabi ka ng Manila paper. Dapat po marunong kayo mag-drawing. Okay? Bakit? Kahit konti lang. So, hindi naman yung super ganda. At least, you know the basics. Okay? Of drawing, ano yan. Kahit, yan, kahit ngayon stick drawing lang, di ba? Kasi importante yun sa mga bata may visual. Okay. Um, at least to facilitate learning in some point na yung bata hindi nagahanap ng um, picture. Or let's say, something na kapag sinasabi mo, hindi naman niya talaga ma-visualize or ma-imagine. So, dapat pa mag-drawing ka. Ang una nyo pa practicing i-drawing tao, sunod po mga hayop, <laughs> ibon, aso, <laughs> yung baka. Yung importante i-drawing yan, i-practice mag, uh, i-practice sa pag-drawing or sketching kasi need po yan. 
Sa ka-elementary teacher kayo, ang dami kayong mga auxiliary activities na gagawin sa loob ng, or sa labas ng classroom. Sasabihin ng principal nyo, halika nga dito, uh, Joyce, i-draw mo ako ng ganito, or i-lettering mo nga ako, yung kuyari kayo kung di kayo marunong. So, dapat medyo, may konti kayo dyan alam. Konti lang. So, importante talaga po na merong uh, sketching or drawing subjects, lalo na sa arts, sa inyo. Okay? Meron na ba kayong subject na gano'n? Wala pa. Next Parang next sem. Uh, next Wala semester pa. or next next year. Next school year meron na. Okay? Let's proceed, sir. Um, so, graphic organizer. Graphic organizer are useful tools for building knowledge and organizing information. So, graphic organizer are helpful in learning tool to organize, clarify, or simplify <coughs> conflict information. They help students construct understanding through an exploration of the relationships between concepts. So there are 10 popular types of graphic information. And these are... The first one is the five-paragraph essay. It used for standard essay types including narrative, descriptive, and persuasive. With the use of this, it helps with a basic plan that can help provide a skeleton for the construction of an essay. Ang tanong dito, nagawa niyo to? Pinagawa ba to sa inyo? Hindi, no? Bira. Sa ibang bansa, palagi to. Kasi, ang gandaan ng five-paragraph essay, it's an informative type of um, graphic organizer na hindi lang po puro narrative. Meron siya, sabi kanina, mga persuasive, meron siyang inferring, meron siyang informate, informative, meron pa nga siyang ano yan eh, ang tawag ba dito? Ang uh, declarative. Okay? Oh, meron interrogative type pa dyan. Depende kung nagtatanong yung, yung paragraph or essay in an open-ended um, issue or topic. Okay? Bira tong gamitin sa atin kasi sa atin puro lang essay. Isa lang. <laughs> do, do an essay. Diba? Three paragraphs each. <laughs> Tapos meron pa dyan eh, uh, 150 words. <laughs> Yung gusto ng mga teacher, para exacto daw. Okay, so let's proceed ma'am. Analogy organizer. Use this analogy organizer when teaching new concepts to your class. So students will find it easier to understand new ideas if you compare them to concepts that they are fa already familiar with. Okay, next. Steps in a process. Use this graphic organizer to describe and order the steps in process. Ang um, nagagamit ito, ladies and gentlemen po, sa ating mga ka-eduka, pag gumagamit tayo ng graphic organizer, it is a way, okay, or a tool used for generalization. Kasi since nakalagay na po siya individually, categori categorically, nakaplot na yan doon sa board, sa blackboard ninyo, na ginawa ng mga estudyante, okay, with the guide of the teacher, matutulungan ng teacher at uh, matutulungan ng estudyante ang kanyang sarili para mapakapunta doon sa generalization part ng topic. Kasi may guide na yan, eh. may, may, may arrow yan. Importante na mayroong arrow or let's say um, uh, guide ang graphic organizer. Pag wala kasi, mahirap. Alam nyo mga graphic organizer, meron yung mga linya. Pagkatutumbong yan, hindi pwedeng wala. Okay? So, nakakatulong siya pag-generalize. Kasi kahit yung bata, <laughs> minsan kasi may mga batang hindi nakikinig sa teacher, dun lang siya nakapokus sa graph, ina-analyze niya na eh. Oh. O meron din yung bata na, na nakatutok sa graph habang nagsasalita si teacher, okay, iniintindihan niyo both. Okay? So, at least yung bata, merong freedom for them to generalize the topic. Okay? Let's proceed, ma'am. Triple Venn Diagram Use this three-part Venn Diagram to identify differences and similarities. This is a diagram that shows how the elements of three sets are related using three overlapping circles. So, kadalasan, ginagamit din natin ito. When the three circles in a Venn Diagram overlap, the overlapping parts contain elements that are common to any two circles or all the three circles? Uh, ang Venn diagram, uh, it's a uh, graphic organizer to check the similarities and differences. In short, yung relation ng isang bagay sa kapwa niya bagay or sa kapwa niya ano yan, uh, category. Ito yung ginagamit natin. Okay? So, for example, sa 
aralin panlipunan, anong pwede nating gam- paggamitan nitong subject matter? Ano sa tingin niyo? In AP, so, ano pwede nating gamitin? Or let's say, saan natin ito pwedeng uh, igamit? Anong topic sa tingin nyo? Ano po? Uh, ano sir? Saan? Sa ano po sir? Sa, sa revolution po. Ayan, pwede. Issues regarding doon sa ano yan? Sa katipunan. Pwede nyo gamitin yan dyan eh. Katipunan. Tapos dito sa... Try natin ipakita sa, sa mga viewers natin. Okay. So ito. For example, dito sa gilid, sa isang part, uh, ito yung... Kat, ito. ito katipunan. Dito naman is mga Espanyol. Okay. Si Gwardiya Civil. Dito naman sa kabila. Uh, tawag ba dito? Yung mga mamamayan. Diyan sa tignang gitna dyan dyan, uh, pwede natin gamitin is... Uh, Uh, meron siyang maano yan um, casualties yung mga namatay pwede naman dyan yung mga nadistroso ng gera tapos doon naman sa taas pwede naman natin dyan is mga hidwaan tapos paghiganti so sa loob ng tatlong yan nakalagay yung word na gera ba diba? war so pwedeng gamitin yung Venn diagram let's proceed ma'am so KW chart version 3 the simple KW chart can be used in all curriculum areas and all grade levels. The activity will keep your students organized with new information they learn as well as key aspects of the topic that they want to learn more about. Okay, next. The next is three paragraph main idea and details chart. This graphic organizer will help your students identify the main idea and supporting facts in three paragraphs. It is excellent for analyzing a five-paragraph essay. The purpose of it is to provide framework for students to re- record the main idea and details that can be found within each paragraph as their read and text. Okay, the next, next is cause and effect. And- Students are asked to identify cause and effects of a story with this graphic organizer. So, cause and effect. Gamit na gamit yan, Brad. <laughs> gamit na gamit okay. yan sa inyo. Yung cause and effect na yan. Oo. Lalong-lalo sa aralin panlipunan. For example, nakalagay doon sa taas, effect. Tapos yung dito sa kabila, cause. Okay, so nakalagay doon sa, dito sa inyong cause. Okay, tapos sa kabila, effect. Um, EDSA People Power Revolution. Ano ang cause? Oh, sino? Who, what, where, when? Nakalagay yan dyan. Okay, Revolution of 1896. Oh, ba diba? Sino ang dahilan? Who, what, where, when? Ang cause. Okay, tapos, uh, snap election nga yan. Oh, sinong dahilan? Who are what? When? Yan. Yun ang ibig sabihin ng cause and effect. Okay, let's proceed, sir. So, alphabet organizer. Assign a topic and ask students to complete the grid with as many words as they can. Think that fit in each square on the topic. Natry nyo na to. Alphabet organizer. Natry nyo na yan. Ubusin nyo A, B, C, D, E, F, G hanggang Z. Tapos, padamihan ng information na bibigay. Pwede kayong mag-grouping siya nila, Ro. Oh, kung sino yung may pinakamataas na point, siya ang panalo. O basta yung lahat ng letters, unahan, may maibigay doon sa alphabet organizer. Okay, maganda yan. Gamitin nyo sa laro. Interesting to. Okay, and of course, we have this one. Brainstorm web. Use this graphic order organizer to brainstorm. So, Nakita the brainstorm yun? web Di ba may linya? Oh, may linya. Sige, sir. The brainstorm web is a classic tool used to facilitate group brainstorming. It is best done with all members of the team and after work has been done towards defining the problem at hand. Yan. Ito na, ilalagay nyo na dito sa pinaka-sentro yung lahat ng summary ng inyong pinag-usapan. Dito sa bilog na sa gitna. And yung last. The last is five elements of plot. Five elements of a story plot includes introduction, rising action, 
climax, falling action, and resolution. It is to provide the structure for this graphic organizer. The five elements of a plot. Plot means is the chain of events that make up your story or the combination of your plot points. Introduction is where you introduce your characters, establish the settings, and begin to introduce the primary conflict of your story. Yep. Pricing action is the is normally begins with an inciting incident or a moment that sets your story into action. <coughs> Climax is the peak of tension, plot and character in your story. It's the moment that your readers has been waiting for, so make it exciting. Falling action, this is the time to start resolving conflicts and subplots so your story doesn't feel rushed in the last few chapters. Okay. And lastly, it's the resolution. Tapos na ba? Okay. Ganito guys, um, paano nyo magamit ang five elements plot? Dapat po, meron kayong selection na gagamitin. In short, meron pong reading selection. So, kung gagamit kayo ng five elements plot, or for example, kumuha kayo ng isang short story, biography ng isang tao, for example, Jego Silang, o ba? Diba, nandun nakalagay yung, let's say, in five ang um, paragraphs na short ano yan ang um, biography ni Jego Silang nandun yung kanyang kapanganakan nandun yung nakalagay yung kanyang pagiging bayani yung climax niya is kung paano siya naging ano yan matagumpay sa mga small revolts doon sa um, ano yan sa Ilocos region tapos yung climax niya is tinrider siya ng kanyang mga kaibigan tapos yung conclusion is ano yun yan wag, ang ang pinakamasamang kaaway ang kaibigan <laughs> <laughs> yan yung ayan learning learning ani tawag balito or let's say values nung story okay so ginagamit yung five elements plot uh, elements of a plot dapat po may selection wag kayong gagamit nito kung walang binasa yung estudyante kasi primary po primarily speaking po ginagamit po yan talaga for reading afterwards so ginamit pinagamit ba ito sa inyo na nagbigay ba si teacher sa inyo nito ng style ito, tinutulungan ito ang readers kapag nagkakaroon siya ng um, tawag ba dyan? Movie analysis, um, story analysis, yan yung ginagamit as a, ano tawag ba dito? A, a guide para hindi ka po mawala doon sa inyong um, analysis activity. Yan yung ginagamit natin. Okay? Ano pa, sir? Okay na po, sir. Alright, so tapos na siguro tayo dito. Ladies and gentlemen, so yun po yung mga examples po or let's say mga activities na pwede nating gamitin regarding po sa oral and visual activities. Okay, maraming salamat po, Ma'am Joyce Verial. Thank you very much, Ma'am. And thank you very much, Sir Timothy Jos sa Maniego. So mga kayo, huwag kayong alis and we'll be right back. Papa. All right, so nagbabalikan yung host si Jika Sentai and time check it's already 10.53 in the morning. So maraming salamat sa ating mga viewers. I hope marami kayong natutunan sa aming discussion. And let's check first ang ating uh, chat section sa ating live stream, okay? So sabi ni Sir Mike... Mga po, Martiliana, good morning, sir. Good morning, Tabi Saimo, sir. And good morning, of course, to Sir John Louis Oropesa. Okay, Louis Boy Gaming is watching from Cambodia. <laughs> ah, loka to eh. Gamer pala to eh. Tapos ano yan? A viewer natin. So maraming salamat sa ating mga uh, viewers. Of course, maraming salamat po. Uh, Ninong, Sir Dr. Benji Nebres Dieter. So maraming salamat, sir, for viewing our live stream ngayon. Umaga. So ladies and gentlemen, once again po, Okay, nandito ang ating mga discussant for them to have their last bate. Okay, so word of thanks po, Sir Timothy Joss sa Maniego, Sir? Thank you po sa mga viewers natin and hope you enjoy po your, our discussion and subscribe for more po. All right, Happy nice time po. Okay, thank you very much, Sir Timothy uh, Joss sa Maniego. Maraming salamat, Sir. And Ma'am Joyce Villarreal, word of thanks, Ma'am. Thank you po, sir, and sa mga nanonood. Sana po may natutunan po kayo sa discussion po namin. Alright. Thank you very much, Ma'am Joyce Villarreal. Walang nag-mind. <laughs> 
Wala yung mga si Raulo. Baka makatulog pa yung classmate ninyo. Anyway, maraming salamat pa po sa ating mga discussant. Okay, we have again, Sir uh, Timothy Joss sa Maniego. Maraming salamat, Sir. And we also have Ma'am Joyce Villarreal. Maraming salamat, Ma'am. Ladies and gentlemen, this is your host, Sergio Kassan, dahil nag-iwan ng isang katagayan. This time of pandemic, laging tatandaan. Huh, para matuto ng malupit, diadet, bad papak net. Maraming salamat, ladies and gentlemen. Congratulations po sa ating mga discussion. And good morning. And have a good day. Bye-bye. Maraming salamat po. Thank you po. Viewers, thank you. Tuto kayo ulit mamaya. We will still have the following discussion po sa ating aralipan-lipunan topic. Okay? Maraming salamat. Bye-bye po. Bye-bye.